In this video, I'm going to walk through changing the IP address on a domain controller. And changing the IP address is the easy part. It's the steps you do before and after the change that requires the most work. So I've got a checklist of things that I go through um, and then I've done some research and uh, just created this checklist of different things that I go through before changing the IP address. Um, in environments that have domain controllers, um, you know how important those are. If they go down, I mean, it basically can take down your entire network. People can't authenticate, people can't get access to resources. And if you're in a hybrid environment, it can even affect your uh, cloud environments if they're syncing with uh, on-premise on Active Directory. So again, super, super important to go through um, a checklist and just make sure your environment's uh, healthy, domain controllers are good, um, you know you know what's installed on that server because maybe you're, you change an IP address and you don't realize it was also a web server, um, a DHCP server, and now you've got all kinds of services down. I won't go through all of the, the checklist here because um, there's quite a bit to go through but I'll, I'll link to this in the notes and you can go through it and again I've got a, a, a checklist before you change it and then I've got a checklist after you change it but one thing I want to show is what I like to do is use Wireshark and this will really help me understand everything that is pointing to the domain controller because in larger networks, you know, there's there's always things that people hard code to the IP address of a domain controller or DNS, um, different servers, um, point into it for a time server, um, just all kinds of stuff can be manually configured to point to the IP address of domain controller that you don't know about. So Wireshark can really help you get an idea of um, everything that's using your server. Um, so you can come up here and then you can do filters like, you know, you want to see all DNS traffic. So right here you can see I've got just, you know, another server pointing to it. But to give you an example, I'll go generate some traffic from another computer. And there you can see .12 is now generating some traffic. There's a .22. Um, can this will be this will be really busy in a large network. This is a small lab environment, so not much traffic, but uh, a great tool to get an idea of what's using your servers. So now let's walk through changing the IP address. So you just need to come into your adapter properties and I'm changing to dot 15 and if you're changing to different subnets there's some additional steps that you need to do um, you may need to update sites and services if you're using the domain controller for a DHCP server you may have to go update relay agents on routers or your switches um, but for this example it's just changing to the sub same subnet so it's it's a lot uh, easier process. Um, so that's all I really need to change. Subnet's the same, default gateway's the same, DNS settings are the same. And a, a little tip, the, the Microsoft best practice is, is to have your preferred DNS server point to a, um, a another DNS server and then your alternative should be the loopback address which is 172.0.0 .0 of the server. So click OK. And then there is a few commands that need to be run. So I need to run ipconfig flush DNS to clear the local cache. And then I need to do ipconfig register DNS to update the DNS records. Then run ADC diag slash fix to fix any resource records. 
And that should be it. If everything worked out fine, um, the IP address should be updated. All the DNS records are are updated. So after this, there there is some post changes that you may need to run through. Like um, you know, DHCP, you may need to update that. Um, again, I've pointed this out already, but if you've got systems that are manually pointing to this domain controller IP address, you need to update those. Um, and for example, we'll go to this computer here. And if I do an IP config, you can see it's DHCP server and DNS was of the old IP address. If I reboot this, um, it should grab, you know, it should start pointing to the new new server. But if I come into the adapter properties, you can see it's hard coded to the, the IP address of the old, the old IP address. So if I try to browse the internet, basically DNS isn't working. You know, I won't be able to basically access, access anything by its host name. So I do a ping Google. So Google is responding because it's it's locally cached, but if I ping another name, it, it doesn't respond. If I flush the DNS cache, then ping Google, it no longer works. Because again, that I had run some pings before changing the IP address, so it had um, Google in its local cache. So now that it's pointing to, it's still pointing to the old domain controller, when it tries to do a DNS lookup, it can't access it because that IP address doesn't exist anymore. So I have to come in here to change this. Now DNS works. So that's why it's important to, to run through a checklist and, and use something like Wireshark to get an idea of systems that are pointing to the IP address of your domain controller. Because when I changed the domain controller, this computer here was completely useless. DNS didn't work, which when DNS doesn't work, nothing's gonna work. So a few more tests. So you can see I can ping DC2 by its host name. It's resolved into the correct IP. Uh, I'll jump over to another domain controller. Just want to make sure I can ping it from another domain controller. And yes, I can. Um, you may want to do a DC Diag test DNS. If I come up here, DNS passed. I've got a subdomain that's down, so that's why that fails. Um, you could do a full D DC diag test, which runs through a bunch of stuff. There's a command that tests replication, so you'd probably want to run that. So that's it. The the steps again. The, the step for changing the IP address is really easy. I've got them listed here on my website, um, and I know I keep saying this. But it's it's the steps before and after that really take the most work. Um, I recommend you go through my checklist I've created, and you can even do some of your own research um, to make sure you're not missing anything, make sure your systems are are healthy, no major errors before making the change. Um, and that's that's it. If you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the below subscribe button. Thanks for watching.